Hi, this is Les Major, the creator of Fantasize. Quiet, quiet down there over there, Amanda. Oh, no, what the, <laughs> the two of you, come on. See, no. the, the, this is why I can't have nice things. Okay, I, <laughs> I, I'm joined here today with Misery, and uh, or by Misery. <laughs> You're joined with Misery. That's <laughs> awkward. That's not awkward. I'm, we're, we're conjoined twins. So, um... With the, with the original story, how, how did you feel about the whole progression? Like, uh, normally, would you get really, really, you know, upset and fed up? You know, like, you've just lost your job. You have, like, this really crappy day. You're coming home, soaked in the rain and everything. You get home. You find these little people in your apartment. Misery just kind of, she doesn't completely freak out at first, but she just gets paranoid of them. Do you think that's really an accurate portrayal of how you'd normally just play her out? Or do you figure Misery would just mean finger painting you know the little people all over the wall the moment you found them yeah the, the, that kind of a day that there would definitely be somebody dying um <laughs> now there are some very creative ways to deal with these little problems um like you know there's smushing them under your feet which we did and and you know then there's i like the finger painting idea that was good that needed to be in there <laughs> Totally need to go back and add that in there. Well, she she kind of did that after she stepped on them. <laughs> True. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you can do with them. <laughs> how would you feel about like the whole? I, I how do you take the whole eating concept? I think they're crunchy and delicious and nutritious. And when they scream, it gives you a nice little tickle in your throat. How do you feel about the new characters and the new focus on interaction, character development, and especially getting to see, you know, where Misery came from? Of course, fans don't actually know about why Misery became Misery, but I, how do you feel about how all this has been developing? Um, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I like seeing growth and, and character development, and it's making it... Oh, I, I, all of the fans like seeing growth. <laughs> or, or shrinkage, you know, either way. <laughs> shrinkage. Shrinkage. Um, but no, I, I like I like seeing that it's growing and it's becoming something more than what it started as, and it's far far more approachable for for more people than just the initial niche that it applied to, like or, or that it appealed to. How do you feel about uh, the characterization between Misery and her mother? Do you uh, like the dynamic of the two of them? Kind of is Misery being the bratty daughter that doesn't want to put up with her mother, and you know the mother being kind of this carefree kind of spirit that. She's a single mom, and she just wants to go out there and have fun with you and your friend Roxy. I think it's how a lot of girls with single moms probably feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably. I, not judging. But um, it's it's a hard thing to deal with a parent who is expressing their own person. And just especially when you're young and you're just learning who you are and then watching, you know, you're you're still awkward and you're shy about certain things about yourself and you're not sure if you can share these things with people and then you see your parent out there and they're just putting everything out there and it gets frustrating for you because you want to be out there and you want to be doing all these things but you're afraid of people mocking you or something like that. That is actually a good perspective. I never really thought about, like obviously Misery is just upset in general and all that, but I never really thought about the whole jealousy angle that Misery would actually have kind of a, like almost envying her mother because her mother is, you know, kind of being like the person that Misery wants to be. You know, she's she feels alone in the world, and she really only has Roxy to rely on. As much fun as Roxy is, she's not always sure how to take her because she's a new friend. That, that That's a good point. Do you feel that Misery is that way, that she's just kind of like this a envious kind of character, and maybe that's even what uh, forces her to kind of act out because she feels that, you know, being at home, these little people aren't actually, you know, people that can actually judge her but kind of like a way that she can get out of frustrations yeah i, I think to to misery that the 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 tinies aren't she's not putting together that they're actually people and that these are this is actually happening happening and that you know these actual these her actions actually have consequences to these people she's not thinking about that i think she's thinking about how trapped she is and how sad she is and and, you know, just how angry she is in general, like feeling betrayed about. Am I allowed to put that in there? No, I'm not. Okay. So feeling, feeling angry about some losses that she's had in her life and, and angry that 
she can't be as free as her mother is and uncertain of her friendship with Roxy because it is so new. I think every person who's young goes through this, right? Typically, it's not until you're much later in life that you're comfortable enough with who you are to just do what you feel or say what you mean instead of what you think people want to hear or hiding how you really feel behind like this angry sort of angsty stompy mad persona of like a mask so how do you feel about the whole development of misery seeming to actually enjoy what she's actually getting into obviously misery is kind of come to accept the fact that she actually went from being paranoid of these little people to obviously kind of enjoying what she's actually doing with them. Oh, um, absolutely. It's, it's a source of power for her and for somebody who feels so powerless to have this sort of uh, an outlet is, is a huge thing. How about uh, the whole dynamic in that too, going back to uh, Kitty? Now, now, Kitty, of course, she, she was Misery's best friend. But of course, things fell apart between them and everything. And in the original, she ended up being one of the only characters that Misery actually focused on and one of the characters that Misery actually recognized. With Kitty, do you figure that Misery actually knew what she was doing or at least accepted the fact that, you know, it wasn't just, you know, a visualization of Kitty that she was killing? Or do you figure that she was actually, you know, wanting to make Kitty suffer and she was possibly even just lying to herself? Oh, I think she definitely wanted to make Kitty suffer. Most certainly. Now, whether or not she realized that it was actually Kitty or not, who knows? But definitely the desire to exact revenge was there, undoubtedly. I think I don't think she would have cared had she known that it was real. That is the little thing. is uh, Kitty was one of the first ones, I think maybe possibly one of the only ones, that actually really put up much of an actual convincing story at first. Like Dan and May, uh, Dan was pretty much just like screaming away at Misery, you know, like, why are you doing this kind of thing? But Kitty was actually pleading for her life. If Misery was actually able to hear her, do you think Misery would have actually cared? Um, no, I don't think she would have. I think she is angry enough and hurt enough but she's definitely, she's looking for something to make her feel empowered. And to be able to, like, I mean, she's young, right? So think about when you were young and, and somebody really, really hurt you. I think that if there's not, well, maybe she's of some question, questionable morality. You have, like, uh, even, like, Jed complaining away and sort of being all... Uh kind of begging with absolutely silly things like he was going on about how um or misery and jed used to uh try to dye carol's hair together and everything do you think that uh at that point it was just the whole detachment from reality thing that made misery just not care about any of this just because she wasn't seeing them as her friends yeah i i don't think she would kill people just for the sake of killing them i mean there's there's like i said there's certainly some motivation with kitty but with with the other cast members it's more of a she's come off the train she's exhausted she thinks she's hallucinating and she's just like whatever so again too that's probably why you're quite excited about the character development in the sequel is it allows you to play more with the character and be able to develop into what you want to be so uh lastly how do you feel about uh the development over the course of these years as a whole and do you think uh so far, the production has been, you know, a, a valuable use of time, and it's definitely changed a lot since then. The art style has changed. The, uh, you know, the whole thing's really, you know, become a whole new dynamic. Yeah, there's been a lot of development in terms of technology, software that's being used. Um, certainly in in talent, a lot more experience. Why, thank you. Uh, yeah, hey. Um, absolutely, it's 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 doing. Uh, looking at it now over. Um, look at okay for me personally it feels like looking at animation from like the 90s and then looking at animation from now there's there's a big difference and it's a big progression in technique and style and like I said technology that's available has changed so much I think it's gonna look great and you finally get to learn misery's name misery's name is 
That is an awesome name. I love the name. That's a good name. 